The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, and welcome to our show. Usually this half-hour show uh, I do on stopping, preventing, and reversing diabetes, and that'll be that way uh, in the future. But today, uh, I thought I would introduce a different subject a little bit, and I wanted your idea. You know, write me a letter, or talk to me or something, I'm just, and be open-minded, okay? I mean, the health care reform uh, uh, failed. Uh, and, and, and that concerns me. A lot, a lot of people need it. A lot of people are skipping the medications. Most of us have huge deductibles. So I put together something about 30 pages. A book I'll have come out uh, shortly. Uh, and uh, I, I called it AmeriCare. Uh, AmeriCare. Uh, and I'll, I'll be reading some of this uh, uh, a little bit to you also. Uh, and so the purpose of this book is to propose an idea for a system of health coverage it treats everyone the same, okay? So the Medicare, the Medicaid, the non-insurance, the old, the young, were all in the same boat. I think that's fairness. I think that's our moral obligation. Matter of fact, the title of this book will be AmeriCare, Our Moral Obligation. I, 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 because uh, uh, people on Medicaid, for exa example, the providers, uh, the hospitals, are gonna treat them differently because it pays less. This needs to stop. We all need to, the refunding needs to be the same to every person and child in the United States. That's just my opinion, see if you agree. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to get this through politically, so I, I'd say uh, that's very important, to keep it as simple as possible. I tried to tell somebody running on one of the uh, uh, tickets recently, to say, give people the dream, okay? The dream, Congress will work out the details. Don't make it so complicated. Uh, that people defeat it because they, they don't understand it. And, and President Trump found out the hard way. Uh, I didn't know it was uh, that complex, is what he said. Well, he, it is extremely complex. And uh, so uh, he and his party unsurprisingly failed in their efforts to write a new health care bill. Matter of fact, I was there in Congress today uh, that they uh, voted it down. And, and I spoke uh, to the congressman recently, and they have no plans for the, fu for the future. So uh, to me, this is the ideal political year. This is the ideal political year, because we're going to have these congressional elections. And, and then after that, uh, the present president may go along with it, or if not, uh, a new president may be elected. To me, this is, this is an opportunity that will not come along in a long time. So the enemy of everything is complexity and red tape. So keep it simple. Let's get, let's get the dream out there, okay? And uh, I say bypass and ignore the difficulties and just move in a straight line to the vision. Healthcare for everyone, it's a moral obligation. Low deductibles include vision and dental care. I recently had some tooth work done, had a tooth replaced. That'll be $8,000, please. Insurance covered none of that. Uh, it, it, I more, can afford it more than some people, that's got to stop. We need also dental care and vision care. Uh, health insurance should be for everyone, treating everyone the same, including members of the House and the Senate and the rest of the federal government. They get great insurance. Many of them don't care what we got, okay? And uh, so uh, a great example would be where has this thing been done before? Let me give some examples of how this politically could be done. Out of one Bismarck, who was the, the uh, chancellor who had taken the six or seven German federations and turned them into Germany around 1800s, 1890 or so, he was going to lose the election uh, because the other party had proposed Social Security and the Krankenkasse, that health insurance for everyone. They had proposed that, and it looks like he's, he was going to lose the election. What would you do? 
what would be the one way that, that Otto could still win? He proposed the same thing. <laughs> yeah, he did. And he won the election uh, uh, big time. That was done also in Taiwan. I'll tell you about it later. Uh, so uh, now the country had complete health care and has had it ever since, uh, uh, leading the world. Uh, he won the election by a landslide. Okay. Now, uh, the same thing happened in Taiwan. Yeah. It looked, looked like, and they have Republicans and Democrats. Yeah, it looked like Republicans are going to lose big time because the Democrats proposed national health for Taiwan, which never had. Only the rich had health care. Uh, and you know what the Republicans did? They proposed national health care, and guess what? They won. They won. Interesting. Did that tell you something? So the, to me, this opportunity is there now. I'm not picking Republican or Democrat. I'm picking the situation. Here, the Democrats have a possibility of, of, of winning a big as fall. Who knows? If they do, maybe uh, a new president uh, uh, in a couple of years, uh, and, and they could pass this. Otherwise, it won't happen. Republicans aren't going to do it, OK? Uh, you can see that. They had that chance. And uh, so uh, I, I don't care who proposes it, but I say propose Medicare because I feel it's a moral obligation. So what I'm talking about, building on Medicare, uh, improving it, okay, improving it, adding visual and dental care, re reducing the uh, deductibles, uh, for, for example, uh, I think would be uh, very helpful and get a lot of votes, okay? So what I'm saying is point at the big picture, okay, the big picture. Don't get caught in the details at this stage. How to pay for it, I'll put it right up front. How to pay for it. Two countries. Did it because it, it's going to take some money. It will not happen with, without money. Okay, what two countries uh, 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 did is is they proposed a health care premium. I mean, it's a bad tax. All of Europe has got bad taxes, VAT taxes. But if you call it taxes, people are going to vote for it. But uh, if it's a health care premium, that's something that's added on sales, all sales, not just bad things like alcohol and sugar or whatever. You see in some countries already, it doesn't raise enough money uh, on everything. That way, everyone pays. The rich would pay more because they buy more. But it's not because uh, they're making the most money. Thank you. In sales, it would uh, probably be a small percentage on top of every transaction. And there'd, be mother, there'd be money from other things, employers, but the amount they pay would be less because that way small companies could survive, uh, uh, for example, without having to worry about health care. Uh, uh, other countries uh, might uh, f form businesses here because the health care expense wouldn't be the big number one item. Why would anybody from Europe want to come to this area when, when we have one of the most unhealthy states in the nation? It ain't going to happen. It'll happen rarely, but that way you get around it. And with budgets adjustments, costs will increase over time. It'd be a lot easier for Congress to do it if it's based on a, uh, on a, a health care premium. All that goes to health care. Every dime goes to health care. But what, you, what would you get for that is a health care policy with a low deductible insurance like it does in France and Germany. Switzerland has to pay with, within a week. Within a week, yeah. Oh, that quick, that quick. Uh, and, and, uh, and you have a great benefit. You don't have to buy a policy. It's paid for through, through this health care premium, which you probably uh, won't notice because you can always buy that, that, not that item if you don't want to pay that 2% uh, uh, health care premium. I, I've run this in front of a lot of people. A lot of people like it. If for that, they get a complete policy, no deductible, low deductible. Uh, people who can't afford it all would have zero deductible, uh, I, I think. Uh, it, it might uh, float. Uh, so, uh, uh, but our option is uh, we'll never beat them with lobbyists. We, the people, must go to the polls and vote. The, the lobbyists give too much money to our congressman and senator. You, you can't outspend them. Look at the NRA and, and $30 million to the president, okay? You can't outbribe them. That's not going to happen. You've got to outvote them. We may need to mobilize, we may need to march. but. Politically, though, to me, this is sort of the year it, maybe it could happen. It could happen. So I'm going to put this dream at you, uh, okay? For example, I recently attended a monthly meeting in the Allen County Smoke-Free Division, uh, on the, in the, and they were talking about the cigarette tax. They had three different uh, tax to reduce smoking to children. Our Republican legislator voted them all down. 
okay? Uh, and, and as a result, more people are going to die from smoking done by the Republican Party, state of Indiana. So you got to pay attention to it, okay? And, and it particularly bothered me because Senator David Long, head of the Senate here, uh, his office was in, in Pizza Hut office, and the head of Pizza Hut, and, and the next guy in line, Pizza Hut, all died from smoking, okay? So he saw it. Uh, uh, and, 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 and their pets died too. I lived there because my house burned down. I lived there, I saw it. Their pets developed tumors and died, secondary smoke. So uh, you, uh, I'm really upset uh, for him in the legislature letting these three bills die. I didn't see him out there waking up the electorate and say, you gotta march to get these passed. I didn't see him do that. He just let the, the laws die. Well, some people are gonna die because of that. I said my piece on this matter. And uh, so uh, the lobbyists and the money, we can't beat them. You gotta march in, in, in uh, uh, and vote, okay? So I'm for improving Medicare, for example, including dental and visual care, uh, okay? Uh, uh, in, in The Healing of America, T.H. Reed, a, a very good book to read, studied 12 other countries. I, I've read this three times. I talked to our local congressman, the congressman in Washington, D.C. Uh, they had not read about the other countries. They constantly talked about uh, uh, Canada and England, and they said they're socialistic, but they didn't know how they ran. England, for example, they spend a great deal of money on prevention. Yeah, the family doctor gets paid for every little prevention step that he makes a little more money. So they, they uh, practice a lot of prevention actually in England. So they used to call it socialistic when we got Medicare, Medicaid, the Veterans Administration, we're 70% socialistic already. I'm talking about a moral obligation, uh, not uh, uh, socialism, do you think we're morally obligated to cover every uh, living, uh, 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 person, uh, and, uh, and this is a very good book to read, and a couple of countries describes in their system, I didn't say adopt their systems, but uh, adopt some good things in there, like, for example, the insurance thing. Uh, there's a non-for-profit, that reduces expense 20 to 30 uh, percent. The companies, these are non-for-profits, they still compete against you, They're like Germany's got 200, Switzerland has has a, a few more. If the president had removed the borders between the states and maybe the borders around the U.S., a lot of could have companies could have come in and, and, and given people a lot of choice, but that did not happen. Some states almost had no companies bidding for the insurance. So this is a, uh, a, a huge uh, thing. Uh, preventative care. Uh, prevention uh, uh, is huge. Why is it huge? I was a neurosurgeon 45 years, and I, t and I tell you uh, that 90% of the people I was seeing had health things that could have been prevented. So it needs to be big time, not little time. Every doctor visit needs uh, to speak about prevention. If we, had, if we had national health care, we could do that. Every visit has to be a little talk, you know, unless you fell out on an airplane or something. We need to talk about uh, preventing diseases. That could save also a, a lot of uh, money. Okay, 70 to 80 percent of illnesses, chronic illnesses that we treat, are self-induced. Not exercising, eating the wrong food. Very simple. That can save a huge, huge amount of, uh, of money. And I, in, a, in this book which I'm writing on here, America, which I'll be, I'll be shortly, uh, I mentioned too, there are lots of books uh, where the science is behind what I'm talking about. End of Diabetes, Dr. Furman. Eat to Live, Dr. Furman. Goodbye, Diabetes, Dr. West Youngberg. Eat Fat and Stay Thin, Dr. Hyman. Fat Chance, Dr. Lustig. Secrets of the Non-Diet, Dr. Cashman. 30-Day Miracle, Dr. Franklin House. Fraud and Scam and Type 2 Diabetes by Dr. Cashman. It's a scam. They let you have diabetes, you get sick, so they make the money. It can be prevented 90% of the time. Look at CashmanHealth.com YouTube. You can, you can see it right there. Forks Over Knives. D DVD, China study by Dr. Colonel Campbell. I went to the state public health office in Indianapolis recently. They had not read one of these books. Yeah, yeah. I talked to Dr. Adams there. He hadn't read or done one of them. I don't know how to explain that, okay? So prevention could be a big thing. If we prevented type two diabetes, we'd cut out 30 diseases. We'd save a lot of money, a lot of suffering. Amputations might not occur. Uh, renal transplants, liver transplants might not occur. So that's a big thing. Open the borders up. 
I, I think for insurance, I think a big thing. We can save 20, 30 percent of the insurance money by opening the state border, the national borders, uh, opening the competition. Also, for technology like MRI scan, in, in, in MRI machine in the United States might cost a million and a half. You know, an MRI machine uh, costs in Japan, they open it to an international competition. A scan there costs 125 bucks. Uh, here to get a scan done, what is it? 300, 500, 1200, go to house, hospital, maybe 1500. Okay, so technology can make things cheaper, but it can also make it more expensive because it can start over treatments treatments that have not been studied, and there have been no clinical trials. We approve it, uh, and, and uh, so uh, it can increase uh, expensive too. So enough is enough, okay? Uh, they might say there's not enough money, but remember, 50% of treatments are not needed, in my experience. Uh, there's over-reading of the scans, over-reading of the angiography, uh, uh, and, and the result, you gotta have this. Well. Have there been clinical trials? Has it been studied? I say 20% of medical treatments are not needed. You add on top of that the insurance thing, we're up to 80%. Teach wellness, here I'm talking about, there's plenty money could, could, could uh, be saved. Uh, uh, and and I say open it to competition. Let foreign uh, companies come in, maybe cancer treatments or dental treatments or teeth replacements or uh, eyeglasses, whatever. Let them come in and compete. You, what's gonna happen? The price will drop. So there's a lot of money to be had, and we need. We, and then next, we need a complete system, and and that means, uh, for example, I think there needs to be a committee at a government level, based on my reading of this international book, uh, that approves treatments. And the reason being, otherwise, a good half the treatments will not be needed. I live that world of back fusions, half of those. My opinion is that they're not needed. The overreading, the MRI scan. Uh, it shows the process of aging, and we turn that into a license to fuse it back when, when getting stronger. Uh, some exercises, core exercises, taking a walk a day, getting rid of your diabetes uh, is priority. You could avoid all these things being done. So another, uh, we, we need some control uh, of the uh, uh, system by, by having an, a national board. It, it needs to be done. It's done in other countries. Otherwise, technology will, will use increase the costs so uh, uh, tremendously, uh, uh, unnecessary treatments will, will abound, uh, and we need a con control board. What, and I, I'm not against capitalism here. Uh, there's a system called capitation. Let me give you an example. Suppose General Motors were to go to Lutheran Parkview Hospital and say, I give you 30 million bucks, you take care of the health care of all our 10,000 employees. Okay, uh, you, you know what's gonna, gonna happen? Uh, Suppose a hospital accepts it. They accept the 30 million, and they then are responsible for what occurs in healthcare. Well, you know what the first, one of the first things they're gonna do? They're gonna promote wellness. Because if you get well, they make more money. They're gonna reduce the back fusions because uh, they'll keep the money instead of spending it on you. Uh, same with a lot of unnecessary heart surgery and angioplasties, which occur today which occur today, uh, they'll teach you to eat right and you can avoid 90% of vascular disease. Do they teach it? No, I teach it, but, but, but hardly anybody else is teaching it. And uh, uh, so you see the point, it's called capitation, it's capitalism, uh, and it would save money. So I'm not against free enterprise. Capitation could maybe dominate the whole system as far as I'm concerned, okay? Competition, okay? Let me tell you the, about the placebo and the, and the uh, uh, the nocebo, placebo is uh, positive speak. I give you a red pill and if I say it's gonna help you, 70% chance it'll work because your brain puts out dopamine neurotransmitters and tells your body you're getting well. Okay, the nocebo, which a term hardly anybody knows, but I've written a book on it, uh, place nocebo, uh, place uh, placebo's evil twin. It's an evil twin. How we take an MRI scan that five pages long shows the process of aging Say my age, you did MRI, probably five pages of dictation, but I got no back pain. Uh, but a provider could take that as a nocebo and say, you need your back fused. It occurs all the time. People who don't know and are feeling a backache from tense muscle and stress and things like that, uh, get their back fused when they didn't need it in the first place. Maybe a walk, a little core exercise, what it saved, it occurs all the time. So people need to know, providers need to know. It's not taught at the medical school level yet. What, what the nocebo means, negative speak, angiogram, blood test, um, some, 
Some uh, providers will order 800 blood tests and then act. I know one guy in town, he, that's what he orders. Uh, and then he acts on every little test and gives you all kind of pills and you believe that you're sick. I know a guy in town, I can't believe he's still working. He sure as heck is. And that's all he, he, he makes you sick by telling you and using the nocebo of the blood test to convince you that you're ill. So you get to know the difference between the placebo and the nocebo. Remember I have a book on Amazon talk, talking about that? So th there you learn about the mind-body connection, okay? Uh, that this thing uh, puts our neurotransmitters, hormones, neuropeptides, and tells your, your body, and, and tells uh, your body, uh, uh, your moods, your emotions, your, your spirit, that can affect uh, your symptoms. Uh, so a provider shall always say to you first, what's going on in your life? And this is pretty clear, you know, you fell out of a helicopter or something, okay? Uh, and then I'd like to tell you a little about what they do in France. They hand you a card, Vitaly, a credit card that has all your health information on that, and it's just wonderful. They know everything going on with you, and they've had it for 15 years. You go to the doctor, you put it in there, it comes out with your health information, and at the end, uh, you, you give you a bill, you pay your small deductible, uh, and the insurance company has to pay in one week. One week! Can you imagine? I, I, I just I went uh, to have an ex exam, uh, an eye exam today, and, and you know, three different insurances I got, in the end it'll probably pay 10 bucks, and all the work they got to go through could all be avoided, okay? That we know that uh, it would pay the majority of the fee, maybe a small deductible, maybe. Uh, maybe not, uh, none at all. Really simplify it. Really make it simple instead of this uh, hurdles you got to go over to get anything uh, paid around here. Uh, then I speak about the uh, magic eight in wellness. I, I put eight things together from, from uh, nu nutrition uh, to exercise to spirituality to learning the mind-body connection to get a blood test every year. Blood tests every year should go on the computer and the computer uh, can be different colors. And, it, and, and, and I was speaking about the card vitality. You go in the doctor's office and they could have a band on. And, and what, I see, what I see in the future is the whole wall is the face of, is the, uh, face of the first page of the com computer information. And the, and the doctor says, uh, I, want, I want to see EKG uh, March uh, uh, 1975. And bang, it's on there. And the doctor can look the patient in the eye and it doesn't ha have to look at the computer and never looks at you and he expects you to become well, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, so technology can be helpful uh, in the future. And someone's developing that in, in Naples, Florida right now. I visited them, the whole wall was a computer. That was actually my dream. It was actually my dream. Uh, instead of being caught in this little computer here and I never look at you in the eye uh, and, and how the devil could you possibly ever get well? I'll never find out what's wrong with you. I just react to the t MRI, the nocebo. You need a back fusion, go see the specialist. Instead of t getting on the floor and teaching you back exercises, which I did many times, I had a patient write in occasionally. I wanted a back fusion, and Cash wanted me to strengthen my core muscles. <laughs> yeah. He wanted his money back. Uh, uh, that happened. So, uh, uh, so, uh, we p must participate in our health care. You know, the magical eight, I read them to you, some self-responsibility. Uh, you need to participate in your health care, proper nutrition, physical fitness, uh, wellness as a way of life, okay? Get a blood test done, know your risk factors, okay? So we need a new definition for pain. We go to the doctor and we say, what's the level of your pain? It's a nine, and say, oh, here's your dilaudid. That's gotta stop. We need to change that to avoid the opiate epidemic. 80% of people become addicted to opioids started with a doctor's prescription. We need a new definition. That would save a lot, of, a lot of trouble. If you go to Amazon Books, I have a book by that name, Pain, We Need a New uh, Definition. Uh, otherwise, we're addicting the nation. In this county, we have 30,000 drug addicts. 80% uh, started with a doctor's script. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of pain centers. You know, they, uh, uh, where's your pain? Boom. Oh, well, first we've got to inject you. Uh, and then if you don't get better, they hand you a narcotic script. That's probably what the patient wanted in the first place. And if you give them a narcotic script, they, of course they come back to get the script refilled. And the doctor says, oh, we got to inject you back again. He makes his money. Then he writes you another script. In six months, you, three months, you come back again, maybe in a month. You see the point? So pain is a big problem. We could save a lot of money 
by properly treating pain and by changing uh, uh, the system. So let's get, let's get some things done here, okay? Let's go to the polls and vote and find out uh, what lobbying money your congressman uh, uh, is getting. Uh, and if we're gonna get health care for everyone, okay, you're gonna need to go to the polls. You're gonna need to write some, some letters. You're gonna have to support a, a congressman, a Republican or a Democrat just for this. Okay, this is achievable, but, but I think that politician needs to run on the dream. Okay, if they run on the details, it's too complex. It'll be defeated. The congressman will decide on, on, the, on the details uh, and, 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 and uh, companies, whatever, or uh, uh, remember I said cap capitation companies, or, or if, if they decide in the end to make it non-for-profit insurance companies, I'm not uh, totally uh, 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 opposed to that, whatever. But first, let's fulfill the dream of health care for everyone. It's a moral obligation. I'm designing the cover of the book. I'm writing on it now. In the, in the, in the cover, it has young and old, all races, all ethnic groups uh, are on the cover holding hands. That's the cover, okay? If you don't like it, tell me, but I think probably this is, you know, what I'm talking about. Now you know where my, where my heart is located. Uh, so, but but you have to uh, going to have to participate and help the congressmen that w uh, want to do to do this and don't get defeated by negative speak uh, and, and by things that somebody throws out there which without facts and confuses the whole picture. So in, in summary, contact your congressman, start reading. Maybe I'm going to provide some copy of the book, some free. Maybe you better buy one. I, I'm trying to do this free, get it to many people, and I hope who, uh, our next congressman by, might run on this. Health care, okay, health care for everyone, AmeriCare, I, I, I call it. We're going to keep Medicare, upgrade Medicaid, upgrade uh, Medicare, cover everyone, uh, figure out a way to uh, pay for it, which you will notice the least. You've got to be some money involved. You can use every aphorism and, and get around and say, oh, it'll never work, it's increase our taxes. No, it, you won't have to buy a health policy. You got it. It's a national system. It's going to take a, a national uh, committee to determine what uh, proper uh, uh, treatments are. Uh, for example, otherwise, uh, it, it, the industry will destroy it by inventing every darn thing. They, they'll say, the standard of care is you've got to have this done. Well, a lot of times, the standard of care is to improve how they make the money, okay? That's what it's all about. And the lobbyist, you gotta watch then. Uh, find out, for example, uh, who is contributing to your uh, congressman. And uh, so let me know what your th thoughts are, especially the method of financing it. I'd be in interested in that. You get a better way, it's fine. But otherwise, you can micromanage it to death. You, you, it's gotta be a, a, a dream, a picture, I think this could help a lot of people, especially look at the wellness aspect of it I have on there, which is not very large. And uh, uh, thanks very much for uh, watching. Next week we'll do the diabetes thing again. I thought I'd throw this out there for your digestion. <laughs> okay, we love you. That's why I'm doing it. I'm trying to improve your life. Watch CashmanHealth.com. I have some free lectures at Lutherans. Uh, I, I go to a tri-state pharmacy where I provide free, free counseling by Concordia High there. That's another thing I'm doing recently uh, because I care about you. Uh, I'll educate you. And, and, and if you think something else you'll learn, I, I'm, op I'm open-minded. I love you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate you watching.